Emma's at the movies with her friends. Everyone's having a good time, and things are pretty normal. On the surface, that is. Emma suffers yet another smoking relapse. Emma's friend catches her smoking, knowing that she's trying to quit. She recommends that she go visit Dr. Richard Chin, a famous addiction psychiatrist in the area. Emma decides to do just that. Hello, Emma. You're here for a consultation regarding your smoking, I see. Tell me what's going on. I've been trying to quit smoking for a long time. I've tried every tip that I could find on the internet, but nothing works. I just can't put my mind to it, I guess. Mind to it? Hmm. Have you tried using mindfulness? Mindfulness involves being aware of the moment. You can experience mindfulness through meditation practices that focus on breathing and body sensations. However, simply observing our thoughts, actions, and feelings can unlock this state. Mindfulness-based therapies differ from cognitive behavioral therapies in that instead of changing our thoughts, they attempt to change our attitudes towards our thoughts and feelings. Mindfulness-based relapse prevention, or MBRP, is a specific mindfulness-based therapy. Intended for substance use disorders, it was designed as an aftercare program using mindfulness-based practices to decrease the probability of relapse. The exercises used through MBRP focus on shifting recovering addicts out of autopilot mode and bringing their attention to physical, emotional, and cognitive experiences associated with addiction-related urges. Mindfulness-based therapies are based on a model of addiction that describes it as a system of environmental cues and cognitive responses. Craving is a subjective, cognitive response to environmental triggers such as addictive substances, locations where you've abused these substances in the past, etc. Expected positive outcomes of substance use, such as being able to function again, and a desire to avoid withdrawal symptoms and negative feelings cause people to be caught in this vicious cycle of substance addiction. Mindfulness may disrupt this cycle by allowing you to be aware of and accepting your initial cravings without judging or reacting to them. Mindfulness almost serves as an alternative addiction. The state of relaxation and heightened awareness that you experience is more than just a coping mechanism for cravings and urges, but is rather quite fulfilling in itself. Increased mindfulness may ultimately reduce an individual's likelihood of responding to an addictive substance cue. Now, has mindfulness actually worked on substance use addictions? A recent study found that mindfulness is twice as effective as a gold standard treatment program called Freedom From Smoking and Quitting Smoking. A recent study on the effectiveness of mindfulness-based interventions found consistent evidence of positive outcomes in treating individuals with depression, chronic pain, and addictive behavior using mindfulness-based interventions. The study's results support the idea that mindfulness-based interventions should be seen as evidence-based and they should be used more. Changes in brain function during meditation have been studied. Data shows increased activity in brain regions responsible for affect regulation and attentional control through a greater release of the hormone dopamine. There is a hypothesis that the posterior cingulate cortex, or PCC, of the brain has a major connection with mindfulness. Evidence shows that when someone is focusing on something internally, such as a craving, the PCC becomes activated and during meditation it becomes deactivated. Much of the research around treating addictions using mindfulness has focused on quitting smoking. Future research needs to explore the effectiveness of mindfulness in treating other substance addictions and addictive behaviors. For now, enrolling in mindfulness-based addiction treatment programs is a good complement to traditional addiction treatments like cognitive behavioral therapy. You can practice mindfulness at home as well by using different mindfulness apps, by practicing yoga, by practicing meditation, etc. Here's a list of different resources you can visit to learn about practicing mindfulness on your own. Thanks so much for the great information. I'm going to look at the links on this list and seek out mindfulness-based addiction treatment programs in the area. I'm going to quit smoking once and for all.